Welcome back to Megazoid's Hut. I thought I'd do an update on the Mini Retro TV, which I've been messing around with for another week. It was so difficult to make the first one that uh, I thought I'd, I'd, if I was going to make any more, I'd have to make some slight changes. And uh, just minute ones, really, because I do like the design. I didn't really want to completely redesign it. <clears throat> but uh, so I've added this. You know, it's overwhelming, I know, but uh, I've added this with just an on-off button. Because it failed the how do I turn it on test when I handed it to somebody else. Uh, I spent a long time getting the uh, screen in the right place because it was slightly off-centre, which uh, is annoying for me anyway. But it's now, you know, 100% in the centre there. That only took a few, a few goes. The other one, the other slight change was I added a charging indicator because you couldn't really tell when it was charging. I mean, you'd have to put it in the dark to see, you know, when it was completely charged. But uh, this this charging system that uh, the T7 uses is just basically it's on when it's charging and then it'll go off when it's complete. So I just added a, a light tube there. One of the one of the worst things about this, or one of the hardest things for me, was the problems with the wiring. Like it was really unreliable, it really really fussy, and I, I narrowed it down to one single wire, which is the clock wire, serial clock wire, SCL third one along, to GPO eighteen, and it turned out that even twenty six gauge, twenty six AWG was not fat enough for this uh, clock wire because if you get it you know slightly bent it was doing the artifact thing so you have to go kind of crazy with this wire this is 22 AWG and as soon as I soldered that in and it's difficult to solder because it's, it's just possible to get it through the holes because it's that fat as soon as I soldered that all the problems went away so you know, I've got. To, I'm quite confident now. This is still the only one I've built, but I'm quite confident that uh, I can make some more now, which is uh, which is great because I want to make another five. One of the other changes was the uh, the software side of things because to get the movies onto the mini retro TV, you need you know you need to be fairly ad adept at computing. You need to install Python, install FFmpeg. A uh, whole bunch of other st stuff. Know how to download and edit a movie. You know, it's ridiculous. I, I, I couldn't give this to a seven-year-old, and then expect them to get their own movies on it. However, I thought I'd take a crack at ChatGPT, and this is how it turned out. So I was playing around with the uh, ChatGPT, just asking it some FFmpeg commands because I didn't know what they were. Just trying to see whether things could be improved. And then I asked it about a bat file. You know, maybe it could produce a bat file. Yeah, I can't code. Uh, but, you know, I know how to implement it and tweak it a little bit. So I was just saying, you know, can we bundle this up? And, uh, you know, produced a working bat file, which was great. And then I said, you know, what about uh, what about a GUI? <laughs> you know, what about uh, something a little bit more, uh, you know, user-friendly? And... Um, you know, it suggested Python straight away, and I believe it's uh, it's mainly Python that it produces. Um, but they, you know, started spitting out this code, which uh, you know most of it worked. I mean, if if occasionally things wouldn't work, and then you'd go back to ChatGPT, say this didn't work, and then it will you know pick up the error from it. So it's really quite impressive. And then we just sort of expanded on it. We <laughs> it expanded on it, and. Um, you know, just kept going and going, adding more and more features. And then, you know, finally, it's a very long chat. I won't go through the whole thing. But if finally I said, you know, what about a standalone? Can we, because obviously we're still not cutting out the staging, the stages of installing Python and installing FFmpeg, uh, you know, which is beyond what you should be reasonably asking somebody. You're just giving them a gift. You don't want to make it a, turn it into a, you know, some sort of trial for them. So it said, yeah, yeah, we can uh, we can produce a, a standalone, which is fantastic. And then 
what I've ended up with is something that can be bundled on the SD card and it's completely standalone. So um, here it is, the mini retro TV converter, which uh, you don't need to install anything. It's I mean, obviously there's issues here. I couldn't release this. You know, I can only really give this to friends because uh, I've bundled in FFmpeg and some other bits without any kind of licensing or, you know, <laughs> I don't even understand all that stuff. But uh, here we go. Let's uh, give it a crack. So this is on a machine that doesn't have anything installed. And uh, it will download movies from uh, various sites. Uh, yeah, Daily Motion, you know, TikTok if you wanted to. Um, let's grab a video from this handsome fella and pop it in there. So it just takes the movie, downloads it pretty quickly. There we go, and that's completed. So that's the. Thanks for joining me on Megazoid's Hut. All working. Uh, then you can crop it. This actually, I probably should have picked a smaller video because this is going to take a little while. There we go. So we've got the cropped video the here. Six is probably about as low as you want to go. Otherwise, you won't get. And then we've got to obviously make them smaller to fit on the uh, fit the retro TV format, which is quite quick. So this is just extracting the video data. Completed. And then we extract the audio data. And that's done. We've got the two files ready for Putting on the SD card or micro SD card where you just create a new folder, stick the two files in there, and uh, Bob's your uncle. Oop, no, I don't want to get rid of that. Obviously, get rid of those, get rid of that. And get rid of that. So yeah, I mean to I mean if you're somebody who can code, <clears throat> you know, some kind of Tony Stark <laughs> who can do everything, then this probably looks you know not that impressive. But to me, uh for somebody who doesn't know how to do it, you know, I'm really chuffed with that. And uh, as I said, it makes it better, easier for me to give these away with a clear conscience and uh anyway, thanks for watching.